Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to work through some examples using the addition rule. So let's say that you select a card from a standard deck of 52 cards. Just in case those aren't super comfortable for you, we've got the diagram of them down at the bottom. So we want to find the probability that the card we select is a 4 or an ace. Whenever we see the term or in our probability, we know that we're using the addition rule. Now, which version of the addition rule depends on whether or not our events are mutually exclusive. So we can think about the probability of 4 or an ace being the probability of being a 4 plus the probability of being an ace minus the probability of being a 4 and being an ace. Now hopefully that last thing struck you as a little odd. We know that when we draw a card, it cannot be both a 4 and an ace. So this part is going to be 0. That tells me that drawing a 4 and drawing an ace are mutually exclusive events. So my probability here will be probability of drawing a 4. Well, there are 4 4s out of 52 cards plus the probability of drawing an ace, again, there are four aces out of 52 cards, minus the probability of drawing a card that is both a four and an ace, there are zero such cards out of 52. So my overall probability is eight out of 52. All right, next one. Find the probability that the card is a king or a spade. So once again, we've got that term or, so we're going to be using our addition rule. So the probability of being a king or a spade. Now that would be the probability of being a king plus the probability of being a spade minus the probability of being a king and a spade. So how many kings are there in a deck? There are four kings out of the 52 cards in the deck. How many spades are there? Well, there are 13 of each suit, so there are 13 spades out of 52 cards. Now this last bit, probability of being a king and a spade. We know that that is possible. There is, in fact, a king of spades. So that means by adding up the probability of getting a king and the probability of getting a spade, we have double counted that king of spades. So there is one king of spades out of 52 cards, so we want to subtract that away. So our overall probability here, let's see, 4 plus 13 is 17 minus 1 is 16 out of 52. All right, let's look at another example. You roll a die. So you have a six-sided die and you go ahead and roll it. So let's just remember our sample space for that. We can roll a 1, a 2, a 3, 4, 5, or 6. So find the probability of rolling a number less than three or rolling an odd number. So let's call event A a prob the, the event rolling a number less than three. So less than three, that would include one and two. Let's call event B rolling an odd number. So that would be one, three, and five. Those are the odd numbers. So when we take a look at these two events, we notice that they do have overlap. One is in both events, A and B. So A and B are not mutually exclusive. When we go to calculate the probability of rolling a number that is less than three, or odd, we're going to calculate the probability of a number less than three 
plus the probability of odd minus the overlap. So the probability of less than three and odd. So our probability of less than three, well, there are one, two events or two outcomes in that event out of the six total outcomes in our sample space plus probability of odd. Well, there are one, two, three events in that or outcomes in that event divided by the six total outcomes in our sample space minus the probability of being less than three and odd. That is our one event that is in both out of the six total possible outcomes. So two plus three is five minus one is four out of six or two thirds. So our probability of rolling a number less than three or rolling an odd number is two thirds. All right guys, that does it for this video. We'll catch you in the next one.